Imagine waking up tomorrow and noticing something is different. You found yourself unusually sensitive to numbers. Upon arriving at school, you are met with a math test. Quickly scanning through the exam, you found that all the questions in your head simply make sense, and the answers just come to you. This is definitely not my experience. Hi, friend. My name is Han. I graduated from Columbia University Engineering School this May. I majored in math and operations research. As someone who is pretty skilled at math and even enjoys studying math, people often have the impression that I'm very intelligent, and they think the reason they're bad at math is because they're not as smart as I am. Little do they know that I really struggled at math growing up. I am originally from China. When I was in high school, all students had to study math, English, and Chinese. You could pick between. Two paths: liberal arts, which had history, politics, and geography, or natural science with physics, chemistry, and biology, with a slightly harder math test. Considering the fact that I studied math and engineering in college, lots of people assumed that I must have chosen the natural science track. Surprisingly, I did not. I chose the liberal arts track because I was really bad at math and science. They just seemed so hard to me. I couldn't understand what the teacher was talking about in the lecture. I didn't know how to do my homework. I still remember my first high school math test.、I、had no clue what's going on, and I told myself maybe it's just because the content is really hard. Maybe if I don't get it, no one else will get it either. But I was so wrong. I got a 49, and I still remember the average was 78, and the highest was 96. By U.S. standards, I was definitely getting C's and B's in my math classes, and I thought maybe just because other people are smarter than me, and I'm just bad at math, I got stuck in this cycle of I hate math, so I'm avoiding studying it, and then I got really bad scores, and I hate math even more, and then just felt so defeated, and just. Playing stupid. If you're struggling with math right now, I totally get you. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I went from someone who hated math to becoming someone is really good at math and even enjoying and loving math. What I did when I was in high school, if I saw a very hard problem, I would look at a math problem and have no idea how to approach it. So I'd take out my notes and textbooks and try to figure it out. After a while, I would have some idea and write down the first step. However, as soon as I move on to the next step, I'd get stuck once again. Finally, after 30 minutes, I would manage to complete the question, only to check the answer and find out it was still wrong. So I'd drop down the correct answer and just move on. There's no way it's going to be enjoyable for you if you keep running into problems and getting stuck every single step. This experience will only leave you frustrated and feeling defeated. Here is the system that I use in college, and it actually works. When I encounter a question, I don't start writing immediately. Instead, I take a moment to mentally walk through how I'm going to solve it. If I realize I don't know how to solve it or foresee myself getting stuck, I just give up. Yes. You heard me right. Just gave up. Instead, I look at the answer. I take the time to thoroughly understand the answer key and its approach at each step. Once I've grasped the answer key, I set the answer key aside and try to solve the question on my own. Now I know precisely what the question is asking about. Write down each step. This time, don't give up too easily. I make a genuine effort to apply what I've just learned from the answer. Once I've completed the solution, I compare it to the answer key once again. If I realize I've done it incorrectly or I'm stuck at a point. I cannot quite recall. I just repeat the process, understand the answer key, answer the question again independently until I get right. A couple reasons why this is so much more effective than the first one that I did when I was in high school. First of all, it triggers positive feelings. Instead of feeling frustrated or don't know where to start, you get to complete the question correctly on your own. This will give you a sense of accomplishment, which is my favorite part of being a math major. That I get all the hard questions right. I know how to do the hard questions. It makes me feel good. It will just boost your confidence and intellect. Secondly, this will save your time. And spend all the time effectively before you are spending all the time to try to figure out the question on your own. But actually, you may not be even on the right path. You might be completely wrong, or just even not even in the right chapter of the book.、But、the second approach allows you to spend the majority of the time on learning the answer keys, which is the correct way. If you didn't understand how. The answer key did it, but you will immediately found the correct chapter or the right parts of your notes to study. Certainly, it's so important that you get to write the solutions completely on your own from start to finish. That will give you a comprehensive understanding of how to approach this question from begin to the end. That next time, if you see similar questions. 
you will know it because you already know how to do it completely on your own this time. Why math makes no sense to you sometimes? Technical things has barriers. Unlike history and literature, objects that you may be able to have an understanding of a term that you never heard of before very fast. But for math, you just cannot. For example, if you've never heard of Qin Shi Huang, Wikipedia tells you, oh, Qin Shi Huang was the founder of the Qin Dynasty and the first emperor of unified China. You immediately have an understanding of who he is, what did he do, what's he famous for, and he looked like this. But if you want to know what is linear programming, and then you Google it, and the Wikipedia tells you linear programming, also called linear optimization, is a method to achieve the best outcome, such as maximum profit or lowest cost in a mathematical model whose requirements are represented by linear relationships. Who's someone first time hearing the term linear programming? They may go, what, what the hell is this? This is bullshit. How is this helping me to understand what is linear programming? So when you're trying to learn a math topic, you're not just learning the topic itself. You are also learning all its fundamental concept and what's it built upon. So when you're in your calculus class, and do you feel like, oh my god, I have no idea what the teacher is talking about? How come the teacher jumps from one step to the other step that everyone else seems to get it and I just don't? It's probably because there's stuff that you missed from pre-calc or the previous lessons that the teacher didn't mention. Now we know you don't get it, it's only because you're missing a node of knowledge so you cannot connect the paths together. All those nodes and paths connect together, become a giant network. Don't worry about it too much if you feel like you missed a lot of the knowledge before or you're just way behind. I'm going to tell exactly how can you put your giant network as fast as possible together. And the plan. Found some practice problem sets that have relevant questions. You can ask your teacher or professors or just Google it online. Make sure it has answer keys. And the more thorough of the answer keys, the better. Do 20 questions a day using the process I just mentioned above. I know, it might be a lot, but I promise you it's really worth it. Working through practice questions, you're zooming in on what truly matters or what you're unsure about. Instead of reviewing a whole old book or your notes from last semester, when you found a step you're not getting, that's a clue about what you're missing. You're learning as you go and you're putting it into practice straight up. You will see the stuff that really matters more often and the stuff that doesn't matter might not even show up. So when I was in my senior year of high school, I did two extra hours of math problem sets in addition to my math homeworks. Within one semester, not only that I caught up all the materials I left behind before, but also I become one of the best students in my math class. My math teacher really liked me. I was one of her favorite. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have favorites but I was her favorite and I love her. The beginning is always the hardest part. It might take you forever to understand the answer keys. But after you build this giant network, truly your mind will work completely differently. Obviously, you still need to pay attention to the lectures and do all the math homework, but you no longer will be the person that hates math and have no idea what's going on. So thank you so much for listening. I really hope this will be helpful to you. Bye.